Uh, with the latest rules, we think that uh, potentially by next five years, uh, yes, we know that there will be compromise in terms of performance, more, maybe profitability will not be the same like the U.S. companies. But we see a case where China's self-sufficiency, I'm talking more specific to AI compute, uh, I think, and also with the latest restrictions, China's self-sufficiency can go to 90%. So which means the addressable market can go from 6 billion for Chinese AI compute companies last year to almost 80 billion. So there are a lot of opportunities in the China local supply chain. Uh, so we do think that, uh, I think going forward, self-sufficiency will continue to rise in AI compute for Chinese companies. Yeah, and the conversation was supposed to be about software and AI monetization in 2025 before, of course, the tariff-related headlines really took over the world. Uh, do you see that happening in China and uh, some of the areas, specific names or areas that, that you can talk to us about in China? Uh, to be fair, actually, it's really early days for uh, AI monetization in China, right? Uh, it almost took almost two to three years for the U.S. companies to reach a scale. So even in the U.S., uh, our view is that uh, I think AI break-even for AI companies would be more a 2027 and beyond story. So for China, I think the investment cycle just began. Uh, I think it takes maybe another you know, two to three years for Chinese companies to reach a level where they can monetize. But specific to the point about the industries, uh, clearly, it's going to be you know e-commerce um, advertising. Uh, we are also starting to use uh, AI in at least in China on the travel side, uh, customer care, for example. Uh, so, seeing tremendous progress. But uh, I think we are in an aggressive investment phase as far as China is concerned. So it's basically going back to where US was two years back.